Hi guys, um, today we're going to do a applications of calculus or applications of differentiation question um, where we're going to be uh, determining key points on a graph um, using um, the first and second derivative. Now, what we've been given here today is a cubic function and more specifically a positive cubic function. So before we even get started, I like to give myself a little sketch of what I think this function is going to look like. Now, it's important that you guys can sort of estimate what these functions will look like, just so you can um, uh, figure out if the calculus that you've done and the points that you've got make sense. So it doesn't have to be that special. All we really have to know is if it's a positive cubic, even getting rid of the axes, we know that it's going to look like this. So the reason this helps me is I know that the local maximum is going to become before the local minimum. So that's a good way to check if I've got the answer right. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do to work out where the position of the uh, turning points of this function is, is we need to determine what the gradient function is. So the gradient function is simply determined via the differentiation, finding the derivative. So we're going to go dy dx, and this is going to equal 6x squared minus 18x plus 12. Great. So we know when the um, turning points are because the derivative at the turning points is zero, i.e. the slope of the function at the turning point here is going to be equal to zero, i.e. the slope looks like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to zero and we're going to go about solving for the x value. Now by the looks of our cubic function, we're going to have up to two different solutions for x. So if we keep that in mind, it'll also help. So a little bit of sort of pre-calc algebra here. So we're going to first uh, factorize by 6, because 6 is a common factor to all of these. So 6 goes into 18 three times. 6 goes into 12 twice. Great. And then I can factorize the inside without too much trouble. Oh, wow. I speak too soon. And we get this solution. Now, using oh, the null factor law, now hopefully... Yeah, that doesn't stand for National Football League. That stands for Null Factor Law. We, from here, we can see that x is either going to be equal to 1 or x is going to be equal to 2. Okay, so to locate the position, we've only gone halfway to find the position. The position on uh, the graph, now I've marked a lot of papers with this being their final answer. Now, this tells me whereabouts in x it is, but there are infinitely many y positions that it could be that are associated with these x values. We have to give the position as a coordinate. So what we're going to do is the next step is we're going to substitute x equals 1 and x equals 2 back into our original function to figure out what the y value of the coordinate is. So for the function, I'm using... A Frankenstein of different notations here. The function of 1 is going to be equal to 2 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1. Now we get, if you can't do this maths, there's something wrong with you. 1 cubed is 1 times 2 is 2 minus 9 times 1 squared is minus 9, so 2 minus 9 is negative 7, plus 12 times 1, so negative 7 plus 12 is 5. Cool. So that's given us the y coordinate for the first point. Let's go on to the second point, x equals 2. So we're going to find the function at 
2 is equal to, same thing again, 2 times 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2. Now, 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. 16 minus 9 times 2 squared, which is 4. 9 4 is 36. 16 minus 36 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 12 times 2 is 24 is going to equal 4. So we've got there. So we can then write down our positions. So the turning points are... 1 comma 5 and 2 comma 4. Now what I can do from here is I can quickly go back to my graph that I my sketch that I've drawn and check. This is the first one as we like move along x, the first turning point. It's going to be bigger than the second turning point because this is our local maximum and this is our local minimum. 5 is definitely bigger than 4, so, you know, I'm happy with that. So, what we have to do is we have to go to the second part of the question, which is talking about the nature of the turning points. So, the nature of the turning points, we can't just say it's a maximum or say it's a minimum. We have to be able to prove it or show it. Now, what there is a lot of different ways you can do this. You can find the slope um, before and after the turning points and show that it's a maximum. I like to do the second derivative test. I find it's a lot more sort of to the point. And the way we do that is we're going to uh, take the double derivative of the function. So we're going to go uh, d uh, squared y over dx squared is equal to... Um, 12x minus 18 and we are going to evaluate the double derivative at x equals 1 and x equals 2. So change the color at x equals 1. The double derivative so d squared y over dx squared is going to equal 12 times 1, which is 12, minus 18, which is negative 6. Then the derivative test says, so we can write as, oh, as d squared y over dx squared evaluated at x equals 1 is less than zero, um, the function at one is concave down. Now what that means is concave down means that if the graph is positive, has a positive gradient, the gradient is getting less positive as you go up. If you've got a negative gradient, it means the gradient is getting more negative. So what that has the effect of doing is it makes the graph look like that. That's a concave down graph. So then you can say um, 1 comma 5 is a local uh, maximum. So a cubic by its very nature is not going to have any global minimums or maximums because if we take on the domain x is an element of the real numbers or x is a real number, the um, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, y also approaches positive or negative infinity. So we can only have local maximums or minimums. So then we go into the second one and we have at x equals 2, we can go d squared y over dx squared is equal to, well, let's chuck it in here, 12 times 2 is 24, take 18 is 6. So, again, we can write as the double derivative 
evaluated when x is equal to 2 is greater than 0, f of 2 will be concave up. And what that looks like is this. And then we can final, fin finish this off, finalize it, finish it off, whatever. We can say that 2 comma 4 is a local minimum. And that is all she wrote, to be perfectly honest. We have located the position using coordinates, so we have their exact positions. We haven't just given an x value. And we've also shown their nature using the double derivative test. So it's a you know it's a question that in an exam you should be able to go through without too much stress if you do a couple of practice ones. So I would recommend going through simple ones like this and making sure you can do them quite quickly and have the double derivative process under control as well. So I hope that uh, this video has helped and I'll uh, see you again next time.